Okay, we're back from the woods. We're going to head out to rake some hay, and we'll talk a little bit more about lines. Um, I would like to say that whenever possible, if you have a pair of horses that that work good together, but you think that it'd be better if you did some adjusting, um, whenever possible, it's actually best to leave the lines even because it gets gets more complicated when you do too much adjusting. And also, one thing I didn't mention earlier in the earlier video is the lines are also such to control the how far your horses stand from each other. On these lines, when you go back farther, let me think here how this works. Um, yeah, as you go back farther with the with the these lines, you're gonna be pulling your horses together. And if you slide slide your center buckle ahead, it will be spreading them apart. When you start adjusting them like I was telling you, it changes that some. It's hard to it's just hard to adjust more. So all I'm saying is whenever you can leave the holes leave the buckles adjusted so the holes are the same I kept it. okay my lines are still adjusted that the way they were when I was logging there's two holes in the back of on those behind the buckles so that means they're right even. And if you look right down here, Bill is out ahead of Lady. And uh, surely one of my pet peeves to see my horses not walking together. So I'll probably have to fix that as Buck and Ken having a day off. But anyways, as you can see, Bill, when he's out and doing farm work, he just tends to walk really fast. I'm not so sure if he walks that fast. It's just lady. Maybe she's just a smart horse. I don't know. Maybe she just knows that there's going to be a lot of a lot of walking, and she just paces herself, slows down, and knows that she's got to she's got to walk slow. But uh, it. Uh, it sounds great, but it's just not great as far as I'm concerned. Um, I want them horses to walk together, and you can see by that evening, they are not. So, now, I am off to the side of my seat here. I go as far as I can, I'm still not getting that either, even. So because of that, and because I know my horses, you know, it's not going to change until I do something about it. I'm going to adjust those lines to bring them closer together. Oh! So, to do that, I will take ladies' lines over here and I want to put more pressure on Bill. So that means this buckle has to be slid back. So I slid that buckle all the way back to the last hole. That puts all has a lot more pressure on Bill. Now I'll go around to the other side and do kind of the opposite, basically the opposite. I will slide it up. It was in the middle hole. There's five holes here. I got one up here, but that's for something different. So I have five holes, and I will slide this buckle up to the first hole, which will. Put more pressure on Bill's line and less on ladies. Okay, now that puts it on the furthest one ahead on this one and the furthest one back on the other side. Let's see if that makes a difference. I 
calf step. And we'll watch that evener. That evener is right even. And in the process, they're, of course, these two are, are extremes. Like I've said, they're the most difficult pair I've had to, because of their, of their way they walk. I think it's partially the way the way, the way they hold their heads. Also, they just buck can seem to Bill. I mean, can seem to get away from the pressure on his mouth somehow, and he's got a tough mouth besides. But anyways, by adjusting these lines the way I did, I can keep them walking together. So we'll rake a while and see what happens. Ah, hoppa. Here's another thing I would do years ago. I used to have a pair of horses, uh, Mac and Rocky were the names. They were full brothers. One was a short sway-backed horse and one was a quite a bit taller straight back tourist and Mac the tall one uh, he would work kind of slow and steady kind of like lady all day long and Rocky the sway back one just had to go 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 all the time so instead of adjusting lines like I showed you earlier with Bill what I did with those two is I kept the lines in the same hole and then I would just take their lines down here and I would just tie them in a knot. That would just be on the fastest horse. Like so. And snap them in. Now because Rocky was so bad all the time, I never untied the knot. I just kept them that way. And just when I was done, I would just snap them there. And so the next day, I would just hitch them right in. So they had that much of a knot to make up for the adjustment and it worked really well. Um, like I had said before, I, I do some horse pulling and, and every time I would go to a horse pull, I'd have to take them out and have it regular because when we get to a horse pull, even though Mac was so quiet all week long, when he get to a horse pull, he just had a lot more Adrenaline and, and he was just a whole different horse just like lady is in the woods just a whole different horse And so I couldn't have that line adjustment at that time. So you're continually Changing things around and that's that's okay Okay, I told you in the first video I had a special way I hitched my lines that I've been doing for 30 years. And uh, before I talk about that, I want to just say that um, with these two horses, it seems like Bill has no patience and he has a bit of a temper. And it seems like, you know how it is when you're walking with someone, you're trying to get someplace and they're walking really, really slow. It's hard to have patience with that person. And that's the way it seems to be with Bill. He's walking along and he started off walking just fine. But the more we go, the more agitated he seems to get. He just wants to go faster and faster. Now, I have the lines adjusted in such a way that I've got as much pressure on his bits as I can. And the least amount on ladies. But he's still trying to get ahead. Um, he kind of comes and goes. But he's just being a nuisance. And that's just the way he's always been for the last couple of years that we've owned him. Um, so, my 
other way of doing things is is uh, well, to tell you the truth, I'm kind of scared to even sh tell you and share it with you. Um, some people would think, would might think that it's even a, a harsh way to do it. Um, there are other ways to slow horses down. They have bits that I'm sure most of you are familiar with. A lot of different bits out there, and some of these bits, these lever bits with the chain underneath their um, chin. Um, helps tremendously but I've tried those bits and I just do not like those bits at all. Um, I just think they are less apt to pull because you're holding them back and they just they just don't give it their all when you've got that lever bit on them. So I have been using another type of uh, way to put more pressure on but yet um, not so much that they can't pull good because they seem to pull really well with this as long as it's done properly but the reason i'm scared to share it is because if it's not done properly it is a harsh way to do things so and uh but i'm trying to go try to explain it to you and make it very clear to you that it's only going to work if you have a soft hand and use it in such a way use your hands to only the extent of what you need to if you overdo it it is going to cause a lot of troubles. So, but it can be done. I've been doing it for 30 years and I, I think it's great. Each, every horse reacts a little bit differently to it and you almost have to train them to this way of doing things. But it, it means you don't have to change bits at all. So let me, let me show you what it is. Now I'm sure a lot of you have seen this and probably some of you have even used it and there's different names for them, but I call it a brain strap and uh, it's, Sometimes you can actually make it harsher than others, but the way I do it, it doesn't seem to be too harsh and I've had really good luck with it. So, let me show you what it is. I have just put it on Bill right now to show you because I'm not going to use it today because I don't need to. But uh, um, what I do, and it only works if you have the, the ring up here on their bridle. And you've got to make sure that's a good setup. Um, it's surprising, it, I've had it for years and I've never broke that, never had an issue with that. And it doesn't seem extremely tough, but it seems fine. So what I do is the line actually goes through the bit on the outside and up through and snaps into here. So it's like this. And what that does when he's, when you're holding back on him, it not only puts pressure on his mouth, but it puts pressure up on the top of his head and I have heard that those nerves up there are very sensitive so just all the more reason why you have to be very very careful that's why I'm hesitant to even uh, show this type of, of uh, rigging but it has just worked so good for me I just don't feel like I should keep it to myself and it's like I said it's not a new way of doing things a lot of people have done this but uh, I don't think I've ever seen it done through the bit and up to this right here like this a lot of people actually, they also call it a, a, a brain cord. So they actually have a piece of a wire or cord that goes around and hitches into the bit. And that's just tremendously harsher bit because it's just that cord pressing down on those nerves. Whereas for me, I want a big, broad um, top plate. I'm not sure what you call it. So it, it's, it's wider and it's not quite so harsh. But uh, I just... I've had very good luck with this over the years. I have had a few horses that haven't reacted that great to it. And like I said, you've got to train them to it. I can remember one time using it and I've had a horse rear right up and almost come over backwards because of it. This is back when I was, you know, 30 years ago um, when I wasn't, didn't know what I was doing. Because like I said, it does take some, some getting used to and, and you've got to be very careful. So anyways, when, when and if you do that, you need on both horses, and then you adjust your lines the exact same way. But you, if you have a horse that's fast, it's still gonna be, you still need to adjust the lines. One thing, another thing I have done, um, especially with these two, I, I've never done it with any other horses, but these two I have, and it's worked quite well in the fields. I will keep their, um, I will adjust their buckles back there accordingly but I will actually just use it for buck. I would actually run this through buck. So what that does 
hope I'm clear on this. I'm a little confused myself, so I hope you're not confused. But uh, so by running this through here, you're losing, you know, almost 10 inches of line, which makes a huge difference back in the adjustment. So because of that, you've got to, if you only have it on one horse, which I have done only with this team and it has worked, but you've got to adjust the lines accordingly to make that work. Because if you have it, some horses just do not and do not want that extra pressure. Like Lady, she doesn't need it in the fields. Um, so you have to see what works best for those horses and do it that way. Now, in the woods, a lot of times, I will use it on both horses, because as you've seen in the other videos, that Lady can be quite um, um, aggressive in the woods. And so it works really good with, with in the woods for to have it right on both horses. So anyways, that's my, that's my, uh, I guess, um, secret that I've had that I use and I really like it. Um, but I just, I just caution you, you've got to do it properly or you're going to run into troubles. And so, um, if you do use it, be careful, careful. And, um, uh, Good luck with it, I guess I could say. So anyways, I think this is the end of this video and uh, I wish you well and have a good night. Mm -hmm.